just said Michael. <laughs> no way. Did you do that just now? It's powerful. Before we dive into tonight's investigation, I would like to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. If you browse the web like most of society today, you'll probably find yourself buying things online, paying bills, or just generally accessing sensitive info that could be compromised at any given moment. Surfshark VPN aims to add an extra layer of security by routing your data through a private network of servers so that your identity and personal info remain anonymous while you're online. But Surfshark isn't just for security. You can also use the service to access geo-restricted content like exclusive shows and movies only available in other countries, which is great if you're traveling overseas or if you're just trying to catch up on your favorite show that might be available elsewhere. On top of this, Surfshark VPN also has a whole host of awesome features and has over 100 servers available all over the world that utilize the best technology in the industry. So you can connect anywhere at any time with the click of one button. There's also 24 seven customer support should you need help with anything. With apps available across PC, Mac, iOS, and Android, you can secure all of your devices with just one click using Surfshark VPN. If you click the link in the description down below and use code CHARM at checkout, you'll receive an exclusive offer and an additional three months free as a thank you for supporting this channel. Now let's get into the investigation. Nestled within its historic towns and scenic landscapes, Maryland holds an abundance of rich history steeped in ghostly tales and spectral legends. From the old cobble streets of Annapolis and Baltimore's sprawling complex of row homes, to the aging manor houses and plantation estates of the Eastern Shore, the state is home to countless stories of restless spirits and unexplained occurrences spanning over 400 years of history. Maryland's haunted past is a captivating journey into the paranormal with no shortage of haunts to uncover. And tonight we revisit the Eastern Shore to investigate reportings of a haunting in the heart of St. Michael's, at a restaurant and bar known as the Galley of St. Michael's. This historic home was first constructed in 1806 by James Doris, who purchased the lot from William Sears for the sum of $381 that same year. This two and a half story, five bay Flemish bond brick house, known as the Doris House, was built utilizing the best traditions of early 19th century craftsmanship, including molded water tables, an arched fanlight, brick cornices, and arched dormers. This home, along with a few others located in St. Michael's, represents the highest class of town architecture of the early 19th century. The home would exchange hands several times over the course of nearly a century, and there were periods of time where it was even used for commercial purposes. Between 1891 and 1901, it was known as the Excelsior Hotel. It would eventually go back to being a residence, exchanging hands approximately seven more times before being turned into the National Bank of Maryland in 1963. Another half century of repurposed use, it would be purchased by Jen and Matt Smith in 2017 to be used as a restaurant and bar. Located central to St. Michael's, this 200 plus year old home has seen countless people within its walls, in the heart of a nearly 400 year old town further adding to the layer of mystery surrounding this home. What happened here prior to the establishment of Doris House? What other type of dwelling existed in this very spot 100 or even 200 years before? Did anything of significance occur here that history may have otherwise forgotten? Only time will tell as we dig further into this case and try and figure out what we're dealing with. My name is Jennifer Smith. I own the Galley Restaurant with my husband, Matthew. It's located in St. Michael's, Maryland. After passing through many different families, it was then sold to the National Bank of Maryland. And then after that, I believe it was Bank of America. And then most recently, it was purchased by a local family here in St. Michael's who had a retail store. They built a deck where the drive through was with the bank and they had a small restaurant on that side. And then when we came in, 
we started off on the small restaurant side and our cafe, I should say. And then after about, I'd say a year and a half, um, we needed more space and then we expanded and took over the entire building. When this was a retail store, it was really like, it was broken off into little pieces because it was like a consignment gift store. So all these different ladies had different spots within the house. So as you walked around, it was kind of like sectioned off. And when it was that retail store, I didn't really, I would come over here to talk to the owner and I would go up to her office on the third floor. I never really felt weird or anything, but there were a couple times when I was coming up the stairway with her when I, when I did feel some weird presence and I asked her, you know, what her thoughts were, like, is this possibly be haunted? Because I was getting weird feelings and she said that she doesn't believe in ghosts, so she's never been bothered by any ghosts and let it, you know, left it with that. But it was, as soon as we took over the side of the building and everything was out of the building, all of the knickknacks and gifts and everything. Every time I would come up the stairs, I always felt like I had to turn around and there was something behind me. And then I would think that I was hearing like footsteps behind me going up the stairs, but, and I'd always want to, you know, go up the stairs a little bit faster because I was kind of too scared to look behind me, but there was never anything there, but I felt like there was. Upstairs, I've never felt comfortable, like 100% comfortable. So there's lots of different things that have happened here with me and with other people. Certain people would come up here because we have a restaurant up here. So a lot of the guests will come up here and use it. And then they'll come down and say, you know, is this place haunted? I had this weird feeling up there. And um, so I think different people sense different things. I think the most significant thing for me was that there was a family that was having breakfast downstairs. There's a husband and a wife and I think two boys and a little girl. And they called me into the, the room and asked me, you know, was there anything going on upstairs? And I didn't know what they were talking about and she basically told me that her little girl who's probably I'd say like three or four that she came up here to take her to the bathroom and then we have a little bit of a walkway that has some curtains that kind of hide some storage areas so I guess that the little girl went towards the blue curtains and um and got scared and told her mom that um, there was a little boy behind the curtains well she said it was a monster but I when she told me that the first thing that I went to was that we lost our son and um, he passed away when he was nine. I thought maybe that for whatever reason, maybe it was our son. It was a very busy day. I think it was a Sunday and I remember coming upstairs and like going over to the blue curtains and I was standing in that little hallway, I guess you call it, and I heard over my left shoulder, like in my ear, I heard like that, but it was like more of a it was not friendly. If I am closing, I always like try and get it done before it gets dark. Like I don't like to be in the building by myself. One of our cooks had to come up here to get some stuff out of the storage. And she was on one end of that little kind of under the stairway thing. And she swears that she saw this figure that had like a black cape, like a jacket, but like hooded cape run through that hallway and that goes out to the patio like but you'd have to like unlock the door and um but she said it just went through that way and so she was so frightened and so she wouldn't come up here for a long time we had like a camera and whatever sensor set up right there so when it was first installed i'd say for a month that the alarm would go off all the time. The police would get called out here, we would get called out here, and they would say that there was, you know, there was activity in the building, the sensor went off, and we're like, well, we just left, and we cleared the building, we locked everything up, there, nobody's in the building, but we'd have to drive back here, and the police would be outside, and they'd have to come in and clear the building, and it happened so many times that we had to call the security company, and they had to come and uninstall, like turn off that camera because something kept setting it off. We've already been communicating with us a little bit so far, but uh, we'll just go ahead and introduce ourselves again. I'm David. I'm Mike. We uh, appreciate you letting us come here and speak with you. Look at that, the K2 and the REM pod. Well, 
Thank you. You're a fast learner. You've already figured out how these devices work, but David's the only one that's come here one other time, and that was three years ago? Three years ago, yeah. So Before could... I had any of this equipment. Do you remember, David? Can you bring this device up to yellow or blue? You just have to get a little closer to it. Wow. Look at that. Oh. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you're excited to talk to us tonight. We're really excited to talk to you. Is it okay that we're here? Yeah. Yeah. I can't do it. It's just fresh. What'd that say? Fresh. Got fresh new equipment for you to try out this time. Yeah. We didn't have all this last time. There's another one of those red lights up on the bar behind David. Can you go touch that one too? does the same thing before we started recording uh we heard a wine bottle or something move back behind the bar are you back there making drinks we have the cat balls here that light up we also have a few throughout the room you've played with a few of them already uh, i know there's a lot of activity normally upstairs could you touch the cat ball that's on the stairwell? I really like this. What was yeah. that? Is that the compressor clicking? I think it was the compressor. Are you going to play some pranks on us tonight? You can if you want to. I like to get scared if you want to try and scare us. It's been a while. You know, this is a really old place. We don't know too much about it. Maybe you could fill us in. Tell us why you're here. You know, if this was your home at one point, if you lived close by. Oh, I said no. Did you maybe work here when it was a bank? Are you younger or older? I'm trying to figure out if you're a child or an adult, teenager, young man, young woman. If you're young, can you touch one of those lights we've set out for you? Any one of them will do. You can just touch it as a way to say yes. I swear I'm hearing like full blown conversations behind yeah, I me. Keep, yeah, I keep feel like I'm hearing whispering, but. I'm hearing like talking, not even whispering. I'm hearing like talking. I'm hearing like talking. Something's upstairs. Oh, something just like chapped me on my thigh. Really? Yeah. Are you still here? Do you know Jen? Whoa. Instantly. Yes. 
Well, hopefully the mics picked it up that time. Yeah. How do you know Jen? Are you related to her? Do you know her because she's been here for a while and you've just, you've gotten to know her over the years? Are you a friend of Jen's? Mm -hmm. I definitely wouldn't think of press or anything. No, we've been in here for hours and it hasn't made any kind of noise like that. Was that you responding to us? If so, can you come over and touch one of these lights as a confirmation? That's the, That's compressor. the compressor. I don't know what that noise was before it. Yeah, that was a really weird noise. Are you making those noises over there? Is that you trying to tell us where you're at? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. You're making a lot of noise behind us. Can you come in here and talk to us? You don't have to be shy. We just want to have a conversation with you. If there's anything you want to tell us, it's what we're here for. We're just here to listen. None of this stuff will hurt you in any way. Just like the lights you've been playing with, it's all the same. It all does the same thing. Threat. Threat. We're not a threat and neither is any of this equipment. It's not going to hurt you in any way. It's just uh, to help us communicate better with you, hear your story. You know, gag. gag. Is it? Do you think maybe they're telling us that there's a threat here? Maybe. Jen did say that there. She feels like there is the one, just one spirit or presence here. Is it a male, a male spirit? Is it a female spirit? Well, it's either a child or it's not human. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you a child? you hear that little yeah? yeah. That, I thought I heard a yeah before that, that second one. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you for thank coming you. to talk to us. We were talking with Jen a little bit earlier about, you know, the activity starting when she merged the smaller building with the larger building. Is it because that she went to the larger space? Yeah, maybe you didn't like the renovations happening. So just to confirm, at any point in time, did you live here? Was this your home? Oh, the K2 went off. Okay, so they lived here. Are you buried close by? Were you laid to rest on the property or close to the property?
Jen had told us that this place was a residency for uh, two times in its lifetime, once before the inn and once after. Was it before that you lived here? Maybe you lived here before there was even a building here. A lot of the activity that we were getting starting the investigation was mostly EVPs. We did get a few device responses here and there to some of the more specific questions that we would ask, but a lot of it we couldn't even assess until we got home and actually reviewed the footage. It starts out really subtle, and as the investigation continues, it just it increases tenfold. This case is almost identical to the farmhouse in terms of how it's paced. It's incredible how intelligent these spirits or these beings are, and just how willing they are to communicate with us throughout the night. So the galley is a place that is extra special to me. Uh, it was one of my first investigations as an investigator, uh, probably three or four years ago. I had a person that I worked with that came to me and they knew I was doing this and they came to me and said, hey, let me put you in contact with Jen and see if you can get in there and do the galley. We've heard a lot of really interesting things happening there. When we did the first investigation at the galley three years ago, uh, this was with my other paranormal team, we really didn't get much, but that being said, I'm way more experienced now, way more equipment now, way more methods of communication. They really uh, really like all the new equipment and like talking to us. Do you scare Jen out of harmless fun? Are you only doing that to be funny? Okay. Well, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah, because she was kind of worried. I'm sure that she'll be relieved to know that you're doing it out of Good harmless fun. Nothing here changes as far as you staying here or you existing here. We're just simply here to connect the dots. We would like to know who is here and why. That way we can give you the proper respect and space that you need. Because a lot of people here have acknowledged that you are here. And we know that you're here. You've made your presence known. From my understanding, there's a handful of people that work here, including the owners, that are rather afraid of you. And we're just trying to show them that they don't have to be. And by you talking to us and you touching these lights and making those noises, you're helping confirm that. So we really do appreciate your time. And I hope that throughout the night, while you see us here, you, you get a little more warmed up to us. And you realize that we come here with good intentions and we're just here to talk, that's all. Moving into the spirit box session, we almost immediately started getting responses as soon as the device was turned on and it, it was answering us intelligently. Unfortunately, there are times where we do these sessions. It's kind of hard to make out a lot of what's being said in real time. After editing this together and listening to these responses, it's so crazy how intelligent and how accurate its responses are. I mean, I don't think there's anything residual about this. You like that we just turn that device on for you to use? Or just give you a voice? Can you tell us your name? It's not like Cody. Is that your name? Is it Lisa? One more time. If your name is Lisa, can you touch the, one of those lights, please? That's what I said. Six. Six. 
Were you here? Oh. They were here. They were, here. <laughs> <laughs> were you here when the British invaded? It was answering us directly every time and giving us exactly what we wanted to hear. We just didn't know until we got home. Have you been making all those noises? All those knocks and bangs and moving things? Did you move this cat toy over here earlier? That was so loud. That was like over yeah. this way this time. Yes. That's pretty amazing that you know how to do that. Can you move some other things in the room for us? Can you say the name of the town we're in? It just said Michael. <laughs> no way! That was amazing. That was so cool. That was that was really great. Thank you. Yeah, thank. You. That was really really cool. That was neat. So we're this is it's intelligent. Yeah, definitely. There were only a handful of times that we actually heard physical noises in the building, but every time it would happen, you just couldn't ignore it. It definitely has enough energy to make itself known, either by moving things physically or speaking to us through the devices. At that point, I knew whatever it was that we were talking to understood us. It was intelligent. It could communicate with us. It knew what we were saying and it knew how to answer us. There was nothing residual about this. It completely changed how we approached the investigation for the rest of the night. Walking in, we didn't really know what we were dealing with. We just knew that there was something there and it was engaging with the staff and the owners there. And you'll see, Again, as this investigation goes on, it just gets more and more insane. I mean, I I cannot recall, at least recently, when we've had something so intelligent just speak to us directly over and over again. Do you know what the name of this building is right now? Not what it used to be, what, it, what it's called right now? Did it, I swear it sounded like it said it. <laughs> I'm wow. Sure the Can you say one of our names? Purple. Yeah. Do you like this device that I'm pointing at? I really like this device. It's one thing when you think that you're dealing with one intelligent being, but to know that you're dealing with multiple in the same space and to hear them communicate back and forth with each other through our physical devices. Uh, it's just, it's mind blowing because I'm sure they don't have to use that stuff to talk to each other, especially if they're in the same space and I, I would assume on the same realm or plane of existence. Why would what I would assume to be like a mother or a father tell their son or whoever to stop playing with the device through our device? Yeah. Do you like this device that I'm pointing at?
it was amazing. I mean, it's amazing to see something like that to get direct communication or even just catch like side conversations of spirits through our equipment. We'd also gotten a response on the spirit box that to me, it sounds like it's saying Uncle Jeffrey. This is where things start to get a little weird and where I think that this property or this location may have something to do with the farmhouse. If you remember when we were in the kitchen, we got a response on the spirit box that also said Uncle Jeffrey. I'm gonna turn this device on so you can talk to us for a little bit. Is it Jeffrey? When I saw this in review for the galley, I immediately thought of the farmhouse, but it also made me think, is Uncle Jeffrey like attached to one of us? Is he with David or with me or, you know, where did he come from? Why is he 30 minutes north of the farmhouse? Or is it Uncle Jeffrey at all? Maybe it's somebody else who is looking for their Uncle Jeffrey. We have several theories and, and possible explanations for it, but it just doesn't make sense. Why, why is there somebody that's from the farmhouse 30 minutes south of St. Michael's in St. Michael's? The spear box session carried on for a little while longer, and I feel like once the responses got a little stale, we decided to move upstairs. This area is a bit heavier for most of the staff. A lot of staff don't like going up here by themselves, uh, if at all. So we decided to set up in this sort of lounge area and try to see what we could get up there. Our only goal tonight is to learn about you. Learn about the things that you experienced, your life. We just need you to touch one of these lights to let us know that you're here. None of this stuff will hurt you in any way. It's just so we can talk to each other, that's all. great thank you thank you we appreciate that oh. it like you know like when you click it was it didn't want to focus it was focusing on something there next to you you know it's got like the tracker moved yeah and then right as that yeah. happened that was going next on. to me you can come have a seat have a conversation with us. Wow. She's very interested to learn about this place. I've been through here a few times, but I don't know much about St. Michael's. I know that this town played a pretty pivotal role in the War of 1812, and I'm told that there's a lot of energy here that seems to have a lot to say. And I'm very excited to learn about this place's history through you. We were talking with a child earlier. Uh, if the child's still here, can you come play with one of the cat toys that are on the table here? Oh. This is immediate. Yeah. Would you like to talk to us? Can you touch one of those toys again, if you would? Alrighty. Very cool. Okay. Well, we're gonna try something a little different. You're gonna talk to David through me, okay? I'm gonna do my best to try and hear you. If you have anything that you would like to say or any messages that you would like to get out, now's your chance to do so, okay? Ready? Yep. So we're going to be using a method of communication here so that you can tell me whatever you we're want. In the bedroom, we're coming down the stairs. Are we in the bedroom right now? We don't care. Who are you? My name's David, and this is Mike. 
just here to learn a little bit about you. Is that okay? What are you doing here? Just trying to find out your history and the history about this building. Is it okay that we're here? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Michael is the one that's uh, talking to you right now. Actually, you seem to really like that device right there. I can. Can you hear me? For a while. He's down in the hallway. Who's down in the hallway? Is it the? Is it the tall, skinny guy in the hallway? The apparition that's seen by some of the employees here? He's down there. Victor. Is his name Victor? That's all I got. His name's Victor. Did he used to live here? I'm getting touched all over right now. Are you touching Mike? Oh, something jabbed me twice on my knee. Earlier something touched Mike on the knee. Is it the same person? That was Jackson. You might as well tell him. Jackson, are you the child? Are you the child that we were speaking with earlier? If so, can you touch that device or touch Mike again? In the hallway. I'm not seeing anything down the hallway. Who is it? Who is down there in the, in the hallway? We don't know. Do you know why they're here? Is anyone still here with us? Almost instant. Can you say something through Mike? Maybe tell us what your name is? Do you believe I'm here? I do. We've been hearing you all night and you've been communicating with us just like that. We really appreciate you uh, continuing to communicate with us throughout the night. You've been doing an amazing, amazing job. But for this, can you talk through Mike? You can tell me anything. I just can't make anything out. Yeah. It's really, like, there's a lot being said, but I just don't, I can't understand anything. Yeah. Do you want to try? I'll try. Let's yeah. swap. Sure. Let's, let's swap and see if you get anything better. Normally, Mike does most of the Estes method because he, he's just really good at getting responses. And I really enjoy asking questions because uh, I feel like I can get a full conversation going. Tonight, just, you know, sometimes when you do these things, you just can't really make out what's going on. You know, spirit box sessions, Estes method, all of those. Sometimes it's just really confusing. You know, sometimes there's more voices coming through than other times. But this time, when I went under, it was really clear. It seemed like they had a message that they wanted to get out and uh, they wanted me to be the one to get it out. I was having a hard time understanding you, but maybe David could try to help you decipher your message a little bit easier. Where are you from? Hi. Hello. You sound like a child's voice that said that too. Are you the child that we were talking to downstairs? Who originally owned this house? I know it was two parts before Jen got a hold of it and turned it into- Don't let them sleep. In the attic. We have no intention of sleeping in the attic. Is that where Jen's office is? He is doing well. Morris. More, whoa. Are you talking about Morris from the farmhouse? Is Morris here right now with David? Is 
Did he travel here? Yes. Lisa. And Lisa again. Okay. So, does Lisa come here? She come here to eat? Get breakfast or whatever? Are you talking about the Lisa that owns the farmhouse that Morris is from? Or is there a Lisa here that used to own this home? Because you've said Lisa twice now tonight. Louder. And I don't know if you're talking about the Lisa that we know or if your name is Lisa. Can you speak clearly enough through David to let me know and help us figure this out? Crazy, man. Morris. How did he know that we were here? We had a very intimate discussion with a Morris not too far from here. He told us that he was a... Naughty. Naughty again. Morris, is that you? Just like you want? Yeah, that's great. I appreciate what you're doing. You're doing a really good job. If you could keep doing that, that would help us talk to each other. Yep, just like that. Were you in the war? Was this ever used as like a field hospital? That was the ending. So at the end of this building's use, it was a field hospital? I got hit. I mean, it would make... Right. Mm, yep. It would make sense. This is a really good structure. Post-war? During war? It's probably one of the largest buildings After in town. Never. Dave. Yeah, you're talking through Dave right now. It's real. He's here now. Yeah, Dave is here now. Mike's here. I am here. He's eager to something. I'm eager to talk to you and learn why you're here. You sound like you've already met me before. Ah. Something just like tugged on my shirt. Have we met? I suggest that you Work with me. Fresh. I'm, classic. I'm doing my best. You're doing a really good job talking through David. I have questions. Sure. For you. What do you want to ask me? What are you doing I'm, here? I'm just trying to talk to you, that's all. I would like to learn about you and learn about this place. When did we die? I'm not sure. That's what we're trying to figure out. God? Morris. Morris again. To get Morris, 30 minutes from where we had originally met him, I didn't know what to say. I mean, there's a good bit that I had to cut out where I just sat there in disbelief because, you know, we hadn't talked to Morris in months. And for him to come through in St. Michael's, just, it's incredible. I tried to do some research on this building regarding the field hospital theory, but I, I couldn't find anything online that pointed to any sources that said it was used as a field hospital during the War of 1812. Who knows, maybe wounded soldiers or wounded townspeople got treated in this building at one point. Can you help us? Yeah, I can try to. What do you need help with? Can I leave? You can do whatever you want. You don't have to I stay. Like to. Go ahead. If you see a light anywhere, please go towards it. We're just in. You're just in what? Sean. Sean. David. Morris. 
anybody else that's here that's listening you know like i said you don't have to stay here if you're if you want to leave you can leave you have free will how do you you go towards the light terrible idea what's a terrible idea leaving or staying don't test us i'm not trying to test you at all get up why why the sudden change? Where's all this hostility coming from? Heck no. Never. Well, no, you're getting a little hostile. I don't know what happened unless I'm speaking to somebody Time new. To wake up. Oh. You followed me. I don't know if I just saw like my hair or something. I just... feel like I just heard my voice. That was weird. Did I see you just now? So? I just, I want to know. Did I see you? Who is this? You're different. You're not who I've been speaking to. Are you the My neg- words. Are you the negative one or the angry one? What are you angry about? You can tell me, it's okay. I'm not gonna judge you. Tell me what's on your mind. Sixteen. Is this Morris again? Mm. Morris, how did you get here? Can you please tell me? And I know. Before you get him. And I know it's not you saying those things. I hope it's not. Oh, wait. My hand just feel like it just went numb. You okay? It's getting good. It's getting really good. You okay? Yeah, it literally just feels like these three fingers just went numb in my hand when I did when I said that. Did you do that? So who am I talking to? Am I talking to Morris? I like playing. I like playing too. This is a fun game. The more you talk, the more we can play. I'm excited. Me too. I just need you to answer a few questions for me. Run. Jacob. I'm open to play. I was so consumed in this Estes method that I had completely lost track of the other cameras that were recording. So I got up, I just restarted everything real quick while David was still under and. This hit its limit. David. Sink. Sound check. It was Mike. Shut the fuck up. You can't hear what's going on around you. You can't see anything, kind of put you in the state of sensory deprivation. To go back and look at the responses that I gave Mike from his uh, questions were really, really incredible. Michael? Yes? Play. What do you want to play? Ball. These, these cat toys? Birthday. Is today your birthday? Happy birthday. Exactly. Well, happy birthday to you. How old are you? Seven. Well, happy seventh birthday. You make me feel good. 
I'm glad. You make me feel good. Whoa. I'm in your face. Face. Ooh. <laughs> um. I think I just saw you in the hallway there. Did I see you just now? This is this is insane. <laughs> this is absolutely insane. Something's pushing my chair right now. Okay, so the seven-year-old, are you, are you Lisa? If I get your name right, can you touch one of these or can you touch this toy again for me? Just so I can confirm it. This is the best thought. <laughs> is this Lisa? I'm, I'm asking specifically for the seven-year-old. I want to know who the birthday boy or girl is. Is this Jacob? This isn't right. What isn't right? You can talk to me. Go to bed. I'm not tired. I want to stay here and talk to you. Is that okay? I know that most people are afraid of you, but I'm very eager Baltimore. to talk to you. Yeah, that's where I'm from. How'd you know that? It's your home. How... How did you know that? Mike. Yeah. How did you know that? That's why I asked if we've met before because... Hero. Did I meet you in the farmhouse or... Thank you for helping. Of course, you're absolutely welcome, but I'm still trying to figure out who you are. There's more to help. And I'm eager to help them. This is insane, man. Who all needs help? Can you tell me? It hurts. What hurts? The way you feel. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Almost done. Michael, stop. Would you like me to turn all this stuff off? No. Okay. Get up. Okay. Now what? I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm up. Like, what do you want me to do? I'm standing. I got up. Would you like me to sit somewhere else? You're a trip. Do you want me to sit over here? Come get him. Come get who? Him. Who? David? Harry. Harry. Is Harry in need of my help? Down there. Talking about downstairs? Down the road. Down the road. Where down the road? Can you describe it for me? Yeah, there's a lot coming through right now. Can you just, can you describe where Harry is in one word or two words? This isn't a big place, so it'll be pretty easy to narrow it down. Where is Harry at? Can you tell me? Careless. I know you're probably frustrated with Harry I right now, but let's barely. try. Let's try to remain calm. It sounded like it was frustrated and it wanted me to go down the street or go somewhere to help this person. But I'm more surprised by the fact that it knew who I was already. It knew where I was from. It knows my name. And it knew that I had helped, I guess, 
other spirits or at least Clarabelle. To hear it say Harry down the road was, was really, really cool. Who was playing with those cat toys? Was that Harry? Can you make them light up again if that was you? Please? Thank you. Yeah, Thank thanks, you, Harry. I can see through his eyes. Through mine or through David's? You? Me? What do you see right now? David. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. I'm looking right at David. Okay. The tree. What am I looking at now? Can you tell me what I'm looking at? at the camera. I really don't know how you can write something off like this as coincidence or luck. David can't hear anything that I'm saying. So for him to know what I'm looking at and to say it in that moment that I'm looking at it, you know, I look up, there's a tree in the, the room that has a bunch of decorative lights on it. It says tree. I glance down at the camera. It knows I'm looking at the camera. It knew I was looking at David. It's just, it's insane. I glance down for two seconds, not even two seconds, to check this angle. And Any problems with it? And as soon as I did that, he said that. Now, oh, yeah. just a just just a little bit of a crooked angle, but I fixed it. How did you know that? There's one point where the spirit that we're speaking with says that it can see through our eyes. We didn't know at the time whose eyes they were looking through but then it made it pretty apparent really fast. But that's definitely something I've never really experienced before, which is very unique. I don't know if I've really seen anyone get information like that before. Do you know where we are? We are in the galley. In town? Yes, we are. We are in town. Mulberry Street? I'm, is this Mulberry Street? Cafe? Pushing on the back of the chair again. Are you touching David? The weirdest feeling. Is David? See if it's me. Is David in your spot? Are you trying to get warm by the fire? I'm behind you. Behind David? Pushing. This is incredible. I don't even want to stop him. He's here. Who's By here? Stairs. Who is here? Can you tell me who that is? Talk to me. I'm talking to you right now. He's tall. Is it the tall man? The tall shadow? Don't look at him. Okay, I'm not looking. It'll make you weak. I'm not looking at him. I'm just looking at David, trying to talk to you, okay? I'm not looking over. Really hot. I'm not gonna look over there, because you told me not to. Who is he? It's a prank. <laughs> You're funny. You're very funny. You got me good. I did say you could try and scare us or prank us. That was a good one. Oh, f Jesus Christ. That was, a that was a big one. I mean, my, I felt my whole chair move. You scared the shit out of me. 
It was almost like someone was trying to tip over my chair uh, and it happened with such force so fast. Right before that, we were hearing that they were pranksters and they were at the top of the stairs right behind where I was sitting. We've never had a case where a spirit has a sense of humor and actually wants to play along with it. I told it earlier in the night off camera when we were joking around that if it wanted to scare us or prank us, it could because we were telling jokes with each other and our devices started going off. And I mentioned it again on camera just to kind of clarify and let it know that if it wanted to mess with us, it could. It took its time. It really did. It waited for us to kind of drop our guard a little bit, sort of forget about it. And then when the opportunity was right, it hit us. And I just, I'll, I'll keep saying it. I can't get over how amazing this, this evidence is and how intelligent this being is and how willing it is to talk to us too. Going to these places, it's never guaranteed that you're gonna get anything. We took a short break, then we decided to move over down the hall to another room that's very similar. It's set up pretty much the same way, but this is the area I believe that Jen has the most trouble going over to. She tends to feel and see things in the hallway and leading up to her office. Can you happen to tell us what your name is? Cody, I said Cody. Mm -hmm. I swear it's saying Cody. Cody, if that's you, can you confirm by touching one of the devices? It would really help us if you reached out and touched one of those lights, Cody. If that's your name. I keep hearing Cody, but... We just need you to confirm. Sometimes when you're listening to the spirit box, it's just really hard to hear it. But when listening with the headphones, I could hear it clear as day, but for some reason, just listening to the spirit box outright, I just couldn't pick it up. It's really sad to go back and to hear the responses of, help me, save me, I need help. I couldn't understand a lot of that in real time. It just wasn't coming through clear enough for me to decipher the message in real time to be able to talk to them. I didn't know that they knew me. I don't know how they knew me, but they know that they can get help through me somehow. We're getting responses and answers from a different location. It's close by, but not that close. It's still 30 minutes by car. I don't understand how these two locations are tying into each other. It just, it doesn't add up. Is Morris actually here? Is that a prank? I think that there's a family member in the galley looking for Morris. I don't know how he knows us. I don't know how he knows or she knows that we know Morris. The town of St. Michael's is known as the town that fooled the British. During the War of 1812, the British invaded St. Michael's because St. Michael's was producing some kind of specialized ship. I can't remember the name of it, but it was crucial to Baltimore and Maryland winning against the British in the War of 1812. And a lot of those ships were manufactured there in St. Michael's. Their intention was to go and invade it, burn it down, prevent them from building more ships. But St. Michael's did something to throw them off or steer them off course. I think they lit a bunch of lanterns and hung them all over town to confuse where land was. But ultimately it helped St. Michael's kind of stave off 
the invasion of the British. If you remember in the farmhouse, we talked to a soldier named Morris who claimed to be 16 years old. He was a soldier that fought in the War of 1812 and potentially died at the farmhouse, or at least on the land of the farmhouse. It's only 30 minutes south of St. Michael's. Who's to say they didn't breach land down by the farmhouse and make their way up to St. Michael's? Maybe something happened during the battle and Morris escaped but sustained wounds and passed away on the land of the farmhouse. Is his brother in St. Michael's? Did he pass in St. Michael's and is looking for Morris? If they were British soldiers invading, it would make complete sense as to why there are soldiers here. I feel like we weren't getting a ton of responses in real time that we could understand while we were upstairs doing that spirit box session. So we decided to move back downstairs into the bar area. We wanted to conduct one last Estes method, but again, it was just, it was the same situation as before. I sat down, I put the headphones on, and after about five or 10 minutes, I swapped with David because I just couldn't understand anything that was being said. And 95% of the responses that we got when I went under were completely irrelevant to what was being asked anyways. I think that there was a reason for that, I really do. Maybe there was a message that needed to be given to me that only I could understand. And David had to be the one to deliver it. I'm pretty accurate with the Estes Method responses and David was just nailing it that night. I, I just couldn't believe what was being said. I'm not sure what it is about trying to talk to you through this Estes method, but I have a really hard time understanding you. David, on the other hand, hears you loud and clear, so let's swap places and you can talk through him, okay? We're not gonna be here much longer. It's getting late. You have to get home. A long drive ahead of me. I heard the birthday boy come through again. You're leaving? Yeah, unfortunately, but we'll be back. Don't worry. You can stay. I appreciate that, thank you. There's no hurry. I, I'm not in a hurry to get out of here. We are on a time limit though. Okay. I said okay. Yeah. Oh man. I'm sorry. Is this the birthday boy? Or birthday girl? I would love to stay here longer if I could. But it has been an absolute pleasure to come spend the night with you. I hope we've been able to clear the air as far as you and Jen go. I'm sure she'll be relieved to know that you're not here with malicious intent. Most of you. I, I still don't know who the tall man is upstairs and why it gets so quiet up there. Are you in a hurry? No. No shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to be here for a little while longer. Are you okay with us coming back here to talk to you more? Yeah, once. I think it. Oh, yeah, maybe. That's good. Glad to hear yes. that. Yes, it said yes. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to Even hear that. Even though, no one something. Even though what? Sounds like there's a stipulation behind it. Do you want to tell me? No one listens. I'm trying to listen. You're doing to me. You're doing an amazing job. This is probably the clearest I've ever talked to anybody on your side. Or one of the clearest times. And I'm doing my best to listen to you. You listen. Yeah. Alice. I'm trying. You're kind. Thank you. You're very kind. It's very, I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. I appreciate talking to you. I'm glad that you're eager to come out and speak with us. It's not very often we get to talk to people. I'm dead. I swear. I... I How can you say? I, I believe you. I know you're here. I want you to know that we're just here to talk to you. 
make your voice heard. My name's David. Hi, David. Hi. My name's Mike. I'm under you. Are you buried underneath this building? In the basement? Pass. Different question. Sorry. I didn't mean to bring that up. Sad. I want out. I didn't mean to make you sad, David. Is today your birthday? I'm stuck. Bank. Bank. It said bank. David, why do you feel stuck here? What's keeping you here? It's him. The tall man? He's right there. Where? Oof. Left. Is he behind in the, the dark? Is he in the dark? He covers us. Why? Why does he do that? Can you get away from him, David? He's right behind you. Prank? Is the tall man- It's a second wave. Is the tall man just a prank? Yeah. He's not real. Are you the tall man? Are you pretending to be the tall man? It's me. <laughs> Why? Is it just funny to you? There's two of us. Okay. Which one of you is pretending to be the tall man? We hear you. I hear you too. Yes, Mike. You're doing a really good job, by the way. I can't express that enough, how incredible this is. And how incredible you are. I want you to know that. I figured this out? You did figure it out. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're welcome. You're incredible. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is beyond crazy. David, you're amazing. A voice? Or my voice, maybe? I can hear your you voice. You can hear me. I can. I can That's my voice. voice. That is your voice. Can you see us? Sometimes, yeah. i seeing you in and around the building throughout the night. With you? Are you with me right now? We're almost there. Okay. I'll wait for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh no. Oh no, what? What's wrong? He's... He's something. No, we're not doing this prank again. You've already told me that the tall man is a prank. Liar. Is somebody else here that's lying? How does it feel? How does what feel? To be... Sound like you said pranked. Oh my god. <laughs> I did. Oh, dude, this is... <laughs> this is so insane. More questions? Do you want me to ask you more questions? You really? Do a great job listening. That all sounded like it was the same voice. I think you should give credit to David too because David's doing a really good job at being able to hear you and talk to me. Father? Without him being able to hear you like this, we wouldn't be able to talk the way Pass. that we are. I'm very sorry to hear about your father. Is he here with you right now? Yeah. Well, that's good. Did you both live here in this home? He, uh, I don't know, he's something. Is he the tall shadow that you've been pranking me with? Is it actually- You're right. Your father? Yeah. yeah. All right. 
so he's not anything to worry about. I feel trapped. Are you trying to get away from your father? I'd like to. Why don't you just go? Is he not letting you? One drink. Sure. Is water okay? And a dessert. If you want to get away from your father, you can just leave. The same Are way you documenting this? Yeah. Every single bit of it. How do you know about that? Sound like I said, check the cameras. Once again, it's just showing how intelligent it is. It knows that we're there to document and gather information about its existence. I checked the cameras. The angles were fine. The batteries were fine. I had plenty of time left to record on it. So I, I don't know why I'd even mention that. You are real. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm as real as you are. Yeah. 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 Do you have I'm any... real too, maybe? Of course you're real. It's been, it's spinning maybe? You're, you're as real as it gets, trust me. How else would we be having this conversation right now? Trust. Did Morris. You do, did you do that? Did you set He's this, a new guy. Did you set this receipt printer off just now? He's got a long story. I want to get to Attached that. Attached to you? I want to get to that, but did you do that just now? He's powerful. Are you talking? Whoa. But don't worry about it. None of them. Whoa. I am. I am blown away right now. We'll get you. Is Morris with David right now? Morris. Is that okay? Morris, if you're here, can you talk through David, please? Have you been with David? You don't care. I do care. I care very much. I want to know that. I know you do. I want to know that you're with David, if that is you, Morris. You've come through quite a bit tonight, but you seem reluctant or it's This hard. whole time you have. Uh, or maybe you seem reluctant to talk. Or maybe we're just not understanding And it's working. You. I, I care very much. Not with David. Yeah, so does David. We like you guys. We like you too. Have you been at David's house? Have you been with him this whole time? Again, it's just one of those confusing moments where we don't know if Morris is there, if somebody's looking for Morris. We just, we weren't able to confirm it while we were there. Now we have so much new information to follow up on when we go back to the farmhouse to talk to Morris and try to maybe even get interactions from the elementals that are there and the family that's buried on the property. I mean, there's just, I have so many questions now when we go back there because of this case. David, did you and your father live in this house? Or did you live nearby? American. Were you here during the war? Captain something. Was your father a captain? Leonard? Captain Leonard? Does that sound like it sound Leonard again? Are we being clear? Uh, yes, very. The clearest I've ever spoken to anyone on that side. It's falling apart. What's falling apart? Our boat. Captain Leonard was one of the original owners of the property, uh, one of the original DNR uh, in the area of St. Michael's. So my thought is he would spend a lot of time in St. Michael's. For Captain Leonard to even come through, again, more and more pieces are starting to connect back to the farmhouse and what went on there. There's gotta be some kind of significant connection between the two. I mean, at this point, with the evidence that we've gathered and what we've reviewed so far, it's, it's almost impossible at this point to deny it. I don't know if the wreckage that we had scavenged through the next day at the farmhouse had any sort of connection to Captain Leonard. I know it's been there for a while, 
but I don't think it's been there that long. And I don't think it belonged to Captain Leonard. I think that was a totally unrelated incident, but it's still so strange to hear about a crashed boat and wreckage and Captain Leonard in two different places, months apart from each other. Sinking. I'm sinking on water. Badly. Don't drown. David, is there anything else you can tell us before we get going? Breathe. I'm jealous. Of what? Air. It's kind of dark. Did you drown? You. May. Join me. Uh, I'm okay. I think we're gonna end this. In the room? That's red. Red. What? What? Red. What room is that? Upstairs? Kill. Okay. We're killed. It's starting to get kind of weird. Yeah, it was really getting some yeah, weird stuff. Gonna... While doing some research on the area, I came across an article from the Washington Post that basically confirmed everything we had experienced that night. It states, Back down Mulberry Street and across an alley, you'll find Church Cove Park, named for the boaters who docked there as they attended nearby services. Two more cannons point at the Miles River, as if they're still aiming at British invaders. They're there because in 1813, farmer Jacob Gibson pulled a prank before the British attack. He loaded a boat with farmhands and sailed toward the town beating a drum, scaring the inhabitants into thinking the British were attacking. Gibson subsequently donated a pair of cannons to the town to avoid being lynched by the outraged local militia. Those you see here are replicas of the pair. I didn't know much about the history of St. Michael's before going into this investigation, and these experiences led to discovering the story of Jacob Gibson. It was comical knowing that Mr. Gibson was still here two centuries after he had passed playing pranks on the local residents of his hometown. Hopefully this new information will bring some relief to the employees and owners of the galley. Almost every time we start an investigation of a new place, we end it with far more questions than answers. We're never really able to conclude an investigation after just one trip or two trips. It takes a little while to figure out what's there, but it seems like just in the span of one night, this entity told us everything that we wanted to know. It let us know that it wasn't a threat, that we had nothing to worry about, and it even joked with us. Almost every investigation is a heavy case. There's a lot of sorrow and sadness and just pent up frustration. And it seems to be the cause for a lot of the hauntings around us. I mean, usually if somebody passes peacefully or passes on good terms and they're happy and they're satisfied, they, I would assume they would move on. I know I would. I wouldn't stay here if I felt like everything I needed to do was done and I was at peace with myself. But whatever's here, seems to be at peace with itself. It seems to like being here. And it has no problem letting us know that and letting us know that it's not a threat and that it doesn't want to hurt us or the owners or anyone for that matter. It seems to be like a child or multiple children here and they just want to talk. They want to be heard. They want to play with devices and make themselves known. The paranormal is terrifying for most people. Most of society does not want anything to do with the unknown or the afterlife. So I can totally understand why the owners and the employees would be concerned about having activity in their business. It would put anyone on edge, especially if you're not familiar with what this stuff is. But I think Jen and everyone else that works at the galley will be very happy to know that whatever is there is not going to hurt them. And it has very good intentions for existing in that space. Going into this, I had zero expectations. I usually go in with an open mind to all of these locations anyways. I don't really expect to get evidence. So when we do, it's, it's nice, but I just never expected anything like this. I mean, for so many connections to be made between the galley and St. Michael's and the farmhouse, for Morris to come back through, Captain Leonard, there was just so much cropping back up from months ago that I was completely blown away by all this evidence. Now when we go back to the farmhouse and follow up with Lisa and Morris, 
we have a whole new set of questions to ask. I'm really glad that Jen invited us out and gave us the opportunity to investigate her business and figure out what's there. And I hope that after she sees this, she has some peace of mind. And maybe this will change the dynamic between the owners, the staff, and the energy that's there because now they know what they're dealing with and they know who's there. We had a lot of activity tonight uh, using all of our equipment, the REM pods, the cat bows, the spirit box, pretty much everything went off that night. Unfortunately for this investigation, we didn't have Matt with us. We had a great investigation still, gave us a lot of answers that we can give to Jen and the other members of the galley. When we come back, it's gonna be really hard to top this, but we will have Matt with us and hopefully his energy can bring out even more questions and even more responses because they definitely seem to like communicating with us. They seem to like us. We're gonna do everything that we can to help them and get their story out and you know, try to find the people that they want us to find.